I hid the most legible part of Emma's name. I didn't expect Lana to go and wipe the blood of off all the pieces. But if you fabricated all the evidence, what's to say you didn't fabricate the message on this jar, too? Ho ho ho! Some people just don't know when to quit, do they? That's why I kept one more item for insurance. Give me in that piece of cloth. Come on, Rido, cough it up already. I know you have it. What are you reading for, Mr. Wright? So you admit to it then, Chief Gant, that you were hiding the cloth you cut off the victim's vest in your safe. Yes, I admit it. I didn't want to have to do all that, being chief and all. But it's a lot better than being portrayed as a murderer. Well, Mr. Wright, what do you have to say for yourself? Just a moment ago, you said you didn't have any evidence you could present. <clears throat> Foolish move, right -o. You should have shown it then before it was too late. It's been a long battle. Wait, I can save myself here. But the moment of truth has finally arrived. As long as I don't mess up here, victory is mine. Yeah, we'll show him. We'll show the evidence. Because I've got a backup. Your Honor, I do have evidence to present now. Alright. Alright then, let's see this conclusive evidence. The evidence that shows who actually murdered Prosecutor Marshall. I mean, it's presumably this. It's the only thing that'll let me use. Let me verify this once more. On the day of the crime, you personally cut out this piece of the victim's vest. Oh yes, at last you've finally brought it out into the open. There's a handprint on this piece of cloth. Your Honor. The prosecution requests that be immediately sent to the lab for an analysis. This handprint on the leather, there must have been a strong impact for it to be left so clearly. You mean... It could not have been forged. It must be authentic, conclusive evidence. Maybe. I don't know that I believe you. Ho <sighs> ho ho. You're as slow in the uptake as ever, Worthy. What? Think about it. Rado had all this time to present this evidence. That was horrible. I dropped into Edgeworth's voice and couldn't get back out. Yet he was reluctant to do so. Why would that be? You mean you already know? You know whose fingerprints are on that. Mr. Wright, do you really know? Whoever the fingerprints belong to must be the real murderer. Whose fingerprints are they? Very well. I'll tell you. It should be okay now. Everything's proceeding as predicted. They're La, they're Emma's, we know this. The person to whom these fingerprints belong to is... Emma Sky. Emma? Emma Sky? What? They're mine? I'm sorry, Emma. But why? Why didn't you tell me? Ho ho ho! You're really something, Righto. You knew this girl did it all along, and you still tried to pin the murder on me. So it's true, tragic, but true. Have we completely forgot about who killed Bruce Goodman? This girl really did sho shove Prosecutor Marshall to his death. How could you? You, you monster. Miss Sky, 
You knew whose fingerprints those were all along, yet you... You acted like she really didn't. Ms. Sky, it's not over yet. What? I said, this trial isn't over yet. Huh. But I'm afraid it is over, boy. Not only this trial, but your career, too. You purposely concealed this conclusive evidence. That, my friend, is a serious offense. I'm looking forward to pressing charges after the defendant is convicted. I'll have your badge, boy. What's the matter? Cat got your tongue? Aren't you going to tell us how it feels? How it feels to be the one who single-handedly turned a poor little girl into a murderer? Before I do that, there's just one little thing I have to clear up. Oh, and what's that? Who really killed Prosecutor Neil Marshall? What? Chief Gant, you are absolutely right. This piece of cloth proves who the real murderer is. Who killed Neil Marshall, you ask? It was Emma Sky, wasn't it? I'm afraid that's not possible. Come on, right, just this one time, do the, do, do the Edgeworth finger waggle. You could do it. You'd be so cool. Okay, you wouldn't be cool. You'd still be a phony, but you'd be better than you are. Pretending to be Miles is better than being yourself. Trust me. You see, this piece of cloth contains a critical contradiction. What? A contradiction? What is this fool babbling about? I'm talking about a contradiction, one that proves who the real killer is. Mr. Wright, this piece of cloth, what could it possibly contradict? Chief Gant, your tyrannical reign ends here. Behold, the piece of evidence that contradicts this cloth. And what exactly is this supposed to be? This is the picture Ms. Sky took. Take a good look at it. See where the piece of his vest was cut out? Yes, his shirt is showing underneath. It's hard to make out with all the blood on his vest, though. Exactly my point. His chest is soaked with blood. That's only natural. His lungs, no doubt, were punctured. Blood poured out of his mouth. Oh, but that piece of cloth. <clears throat> Wait, there's no blood on it. Ugh. <sighs> Since Emma Skye's fingerprints are on this cloth, there's no doubt that she shoved the prosecutor aside. However, Mr. Marshall was not impaled on the sword at that time. No, this is nonsense. Now then, Chief Gant, let me ask you something. Prosecutor Marshall was not impaled when he was shoved aside. He most likely hit his head on the ground and was knocked out. If so, then tell me, who, co who could it have been? Who could have arrived at the scene before Ms. Lana Skye picked up the unconscious prosecutor and impaled him on the armor's sword? <sighs> then, to make it look like Emma was responsible for the prosecutor's death, said person proceeded to write her name on the jaw with the victim's blood. A jaw that they then broke on purpose to leave behind a clue and make Lana believe her sister did it. Remem remember what you admitted only moments ago? That you personally cut out this bloodless piece of the victim's vest. 
Ironic, isn't it? Through the very act of creating insurance, you proved that you were the actual murderer. No! It's finally over. Bam. <laughs> oh, that was close, Rido. You almost had me. Sorry, but you'll have to do better than that. I refute your allegations. Uh oh, they're going into ber berserk mode. What do you mean you refute his allegations? You see, that piece of cloth is illegal evidence. Order, order, what nonsense is this? Illegal evidence cannot be used to convict a suspect. Remember, Uji? Earlier, Orido here concealed that piece of cloth. So then, what's your excuse, Rido? You do have some conclusive evidence, don't you? By the way, unnecessary flashback drink. Your Honor, I don't have any evidence I can present at this point in time. I know how I'm, I'm gonna. I know how I'm gonna argue. I already know how I'm gonna argue that that's a bullshit. Well, that's true. The defense did refuse to present evidence. At that moment, that piece of cloth ceased to be legal evidence. But that's not fair. Hoo 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 hoo! Did you actually think you could best me in court? It looks like the last laugh's on you, son. I'm afraid Mr. Gan's claim is legally correct. Well, Mr. Edgeworth. True, illegal evidence cannot be used to convict a person. Assuming, of course, that the evidence is indeed illegal. Hmm, well, Mr. Wright. It seems at last. The time for me to reveal my plan has finally arrived. Mr. Wright, do you admit to it? That you purposefully and illegally concealed this piece of cloth? I did not. <clears throat> I admit I refused to present it at one point. Aha, so the evidence is illegal. No, it isn't, Mr. Gant. Huh? It's not that I didn't present evidence, then. It's that I couldn't. What do you mean, you couldn't? <laughs> there are certain procedures involved when presenting evidence. No, Aji, don't listen to his lies. He's nothing but a coward. You can't really believe. There's only one issue left to be resolved in this trial. Is this evidence legal or not? Very well, let us settle this once and for all. Earlier you refused to present evidence. If you can prove your conduct was not in violation of the law, then do so now. I got you. I got you. This is my proof, Your Honor. Evidence law. What's this? I've done my homework too, Chief. Indeed, Emma Sky's fingerprints were on this piece of cloth. However, at that point in time, this was merely a piece of cloth, nothing more. What? You see, it's written right here in this book, the second rule of evidence law. Rule number one, no evidence shall be shown without the approval of the police department. I found this piece of evidence myself inside your safe. It goes without saying, I did not have approval from the police department. Rule number two, unregistered evidence presented must be relevant to the case on trial. And here is the crux of the matter. You see, at the time it was impossible for me to prove the relevance between the cloth and the SL9 incident. What? What kind of nonsense is this? You want relevancy? Just 
just take one look at this picture and... Sorry, but can you recall when was that picture presented? That was shown only a few moments ago. No. He's right. At the beginning of today's trial, that piece of cloth was still meaningless. The person who gave it value as evidence was you, Damon Gant. You yourself confessed to a certain truth. Let me verify this once more. On the day of the crime, you personally cut out this piece of the victim's vest. Oh, yes! No! It was then that you approved this cloth as conclusive evidence. Yes, you, the chief of police, personally approved this cloth. The only person who could have cut this from the victim's vest is the one who stood before Prosecutor Marshall in his final moments. In other words, the real murderer, and there's only one person who that could be. Damon Gant, the killer, was you. <laughs> I knew I should have gotten rid of him. That good for nothing scum. For two years, he's been snooping around the department trying to get something on me. Crimes are being committed every day, yet he insisted on hounding me. Well, your crime wasn't exactly petty. He wanted to reinvestigate the case. He recruited Angel Star, then convinced Bruce Goodman. Detective Goodman. Yeah, that's right. If the evidence in tra is transferred, I'll lose my only chance to find out the truth. Please, you've got to help me. Goodman turned him down, as he ought to. Still, Jake Marshall didn't know when to quit. He, st he stole Goodman's ID card and tried to take the evidence. Goodman came to me that day. He wanted to file a lost item report. I went with him to the evidence room. Then all of a sudden, he decided to speak out. What are you talking about, Goodman? Can you please help reopen the investigation, Chief? If we can't transfer the evidence out, there are too many other questions left unanswered. He opened his evidence locker, and as he was taking the evidence out, he said, It's not too late. I'm going to hand all this over to Marshall. Well, to be honest, I was a bit taken aback by his words. I had a bad feeling when he came to see me, but I never thought he'd bring up SL9. That's when I saw it, that accursed knife. So I shanked him with it. I couldn't just pull it out. Doing so would have only led to more blood, making it near impossible to hide your crime. Even so, the blood was just pouring out. I didn't know who might stumble in, so I hurried to wipe it up. I was worrying so much about the floor, I didn't realize my fatal mistake. The bloody handprint on Detective Gumshoe's locker. I used to be known as the crime computer, but everyone has to start somewhere, I guess. I was too nervous. I had no business doing any of it. Then you put the body in my car. I'm sorry, I couldn't think of any other way to move the body. I broke your trunk, but what's the big deal? You make a lot more than us detectives ever will. Ugh. Leaving, leaving the prosecution's car aside, how? How could you get Ms. Sky involved in all of this? 
Well, she had as much to lose as I did if the truth came out. So you took the evidence from the detective from Detective Goodman's locker. I felt bad for having to do it. I also didn't have the time to pick and choose what to take. So, so you left the f jar fragments in the glove. Yeah. It looks like it was I was better off being an investigator of crimes than a committer. They all did their best to get in my way. I've got to hand it to them. They do their jobs well, much to my dismay. Fake evidence doesn't hold up very well upon close examination. You must have known that. Tell me, Worthy, why do you stand in court? Me? You despise criminals. I can feel it. You and me, we're the same. <clears throat> One day you'll understand. Oh, believe me, you will. You're just one man. You'll see what it really takes to bring them down once you try to go it alone. Well, looks like it's time to say goodbye. Oh, Udgy. What? Looks like we'll have to cancel that lunch date. Sorry, old friend. I'm sorry too, Damon Gant. I knew you as you used to be long ago. You were once a fine investigator and an example to others on the force. I'm sorry to learn that you are no longer that person. Those days are gone now, Wudgy. Thanks for all the memories, though. Don't worry, you'll be fine. Now you have Raito here. And Worthy. With these two around, you can't go wrong. In fact, I can hear them already. The melodious sounds of a new beginning. There are two things I want you to understand. Yes. First, your sister never hurt anyone. Second, Damon Gant betrayed you from the beginning. You see, Ms. Sky, you no longer have any reason to keep silent. You're right. When this trial is over, I'll tell everything. All that I've done these past two years. From the time I had Gant help me forge evidence, up until today. <laughs> 